God calling. I have to laugh as he's uh, recording to him, sharing the devotionals is that <laughs> it still comes out that it seems like, you know, you planned it out or you, you somehow had some hand in manipulating all these little devotionals. And yet the funny thing is, is that the ones that I have now, I, I can't answer for you. You know, obviously you may have um, some others. You may have some personal favorite that you just... You keep in your bathroom or <laughs> you keep wherever that you spend time, you know, to uh, maybe refocus the attention of your attitude and heart to God. And that's what a devotional does. It's not meant to replace any Bible studies or replace prayer time or any other time. But it's just meant to steer you or to remind you or to point you back to focusing in on God in your day. It could be morning. It could be noon. It could be night. It could be all through the day. Who knows? Couldn't you imagine a devotional day of just being a devotion? In your life, an entire emotional experience with God? <laughs> I can, but I'm a nut. <laughs> oh, well. But what I wanted to bring out was that the idea is that all my devotionals that I've had for all these years seem to complement each other they seem to fit together they all seem to sometimes speak you know to each other and talk about the same topic on a particular day you know and that i find fascinating because it's like hmm wow so that's why i like some of the classics sometimes more than i like you know maybe a brand new devotional that's come out although with my wife it seems to go along with the vein you know and so i use that one too but as god has inspired me to you know use these in my life they all seem to fit together and speak to me personally you know they apply his particular insight into where i'm at today and they seem to fit right into it which is nice because then i believe that god is living and alive otherwise you know i toss these just as soon as i toss any christian book that i have that i think is worthless because <laughs> sometimes we get conned into buying things that we probably don't need <laughs> Don't you? I do. Although, most of the time, I don't have that kind of funds to waste, so I take a long time before I purchase something. Jesus. Say my name often. It was in my name Peter bade the lame man walk. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, arise and walk. Jesus. The very sounding of my name in love, tenderness, drives away all evil. It is the word before which all hosts of evil flee. Jesus, my name is the call for a lifetime to rescue you from temptation. Jesus, the name banishes loneliness, dispels gloom. Jesus, summons help to conquer your faults. I will set you on high because you have known my name. Yes, my name, Jesus. Use it more, use it tenderly, use it prayerfully, use it powerfully. You know, at the time that this book was written, it probably wasn't abused as much as it is today. And I mean on both sides of the faith issue, meaning that there are those who don't believe in God that abuse the name of Jesus, and there are those that believe in God that abuse the quote-unquote power supposedly associated with the name of Jesus. <laughs> Did you know Jesus' real name in Hebrew is Yoshua, or Yehoshua, or Yahshua? And that it's Yeshua as a shortened form of that and that actually Yehoshua in Hebrew translates to Joshua hmm how do we get Jesus because it's Greek it's no big deal because God speaks to us in the language we understand God knows us so it's no big deal whether you know Hebrew or whether you know Greek or whether you know where it came from or what it is because when Jesus went into the temple when he spoke and he was reading the scroll they would have known him as Yehoshua ben Joseph, ben Yosef, actually, and he would have been Joshua, the son of Joseph. Now, if I say that to a lot of people today that are into this holy name thing, you know, they'll get all crazy and they go with these Yahoo-Hoo-Hoo's or Yah-Yah's or whatever they do. Whenever they want to make up something, they get some new idea and they run with it. But Jesus is just as simple as you know who you're speaking to. God knows that he's being directed to. 
and Jesus himself can reply. And so the name of Jesus is fine, but there's no mysterious power behind using the word Jesus. It's the person that's behind the word that's the important thing. If you know Jesus personally and he's living inside you, he shared with you, he shares with you every day the marvel and the wonder of being able to speak to and know the living God is inside you. He is the Son of God. He is the Son of Man. He is God. He is Jesus. Always be mindful of that, familiarity with the Son of God. Always respect the fact that Jesus himself gave you the ability to call upon him because while there may be truth to a certain amount of capability that God has given you in the spiritual realm so to speak he didn't give you those things so that you could run off with them and be abusive or to do things in his name without him he gave you those so that you would turn them around back to him and give them back to him so that he could be in charge Jesus did the same he did nothing of himself but he did only those things that he saw his father doing, and he did nothing of himself because it was the Holy Spirit that did through him. So you see, whenever people get carried away in taking some gift they say they have and running with it and using it as they think, then they forget that if we turn it back to God, God delights in that and uses it through us so that we would be the recipient of whatever that gift is in learning as well as those around us that are participating in receiving it and I know that sounds complicated but for the one person that's out there that's kind of like you know gotten a little carried away off on a tangent and thinks that they got this gift so they can run with it and do whatever they want Jesus warned us about one thing in the end of time one thing that concerns a lot of Christians that probably don't have to worry about it but should be mentioned in the sense of being concerned he said that there would be some that would come to him and say, Lord, Lord, haven't we done all these things in your name? Haven't we prophesied in thy name? Haven't we cast out demons in thy name? Haven't we healed the sick in thy name, raised the dead? And he'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. Because there is not that question of whether or not it was a genuine gift. There is not question of whether or not it was true the point is did they know Jesus I don't think it's some counterfeit you know if you wanted to create some really weird doctrine I guess you could try to say that it's some counterfeit demonic manifestation of something that was a counterfeit capability but that's not what Jesus said it was it's very simple when you read it read it what it says read as it is you know and he just simply said look you know I don't know you you may have done all these things, but I don't know you. And that's the point. Whatever you do, in all that you do, make sure you know him. First, check in with him, just like you would anyone else. Talk to him. Walk with him. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 gave us the simplest way to live your entire Christian life that you'll never do. It is the probably the smallest verse in the world. I call it the nutshell of God that, you know, if you crack it open and really understand it, it takes care of everything that, you know, like Jesus said when you talked about law and the prophets, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, and love your neighbors yourself. He said everything hinges on that. Well, I got one that your entire word of God falls on in your relationship. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. He shall direct thy path. Boil, it, boil those down and like a nut, you know, crack it open and understand it. And guess what? That sums up the entire, <laughs> the entire Bible in my book. <laughs> but maybe not for you, you know, but that's okay too. But just remember that Jesus, as he is, who he is, is who you're serving. He is your friend if you, may, if you allow him to call you friend. But he is God, and he will judge. Today, get together with Jesus. It's easy.